Welcome, and today we're talking with Dr. Madeline Bashparova, and she is the Professor of Music and Director of Choral Programs. Welcome, Dr. Bashparova. Um, so you're the director of the choral programs. How many years of concerts does this make? Well, here at Hanover, it makes for 17 years of concerts. I came at uh, the year 2001, right after the millennium, the turn of the new century, and um, I was excited to, to start here in the Midwest, coming from uh, the South. So it has been an incredible journey, and I have enjoyed every minute of it. Was it a lot different than the place you taught at before? Um, I was just uh, graduating with my PhD from uh, the University of Alabama, and I spent one year um, as at um, Columbus State University, and it was close to Atlanta. I've enjoyed the experiences that a major metropolitan area offers to musicians. I had the privilege to be selected to perform with the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra chorus and chamber chorus and travel with them around the country, make recordings and uh, um, perform at major venues like Carnegie Hall, for example, and a lot of other things. So it was uh, really an experience, a great education and a wonderful once-in-a-lifetime uh, type of opportunity. And then um, I was really excited to find a place that uh, offers a completely different type of education, uh, like Hanover College. It is a liberal arts institution that we love the mission of the similar types of uh, colleges. And so I thought that that uh, probably better suits who I am. Every year the college sort of, or the choir sort of reinvents itself. I mean, you have seniors that graduate, sadly, you have to say goodbye to them. And then in the fall, you get a whole new group of freshmen to add to the mix. Um, how many new members do you have this year? Well, um, following an uh, exceptional year, I can say that last year was just off the charts for us. We had so many performances. We were lucky to be invited to perform in the inauguration ceremony of the newly elected Governor Holcomb, who happens also to be our graduate. And it was a, a really a great civic occasion for us to participate in. And it was also an acknowledgement for the hard work of all those generations of students who have gone through the program in order to build its reputation to what it is today. And then we followed up with a concert tour to uh, Florida where we met with a number of alumni and we also met new friends, hopefully made a lot of new friends and uh, many um, audience members were excited to hear uh, songs from Indiana and uh, back home again in Indiana, of course, and songs that also were part of the ceremonies, as well as music that represented the cultures of the world, and that basically represented our journey and who we are as a group, as a choir, and uh, of course as an institution. And uh, it was um, also a privilege for us to have our, I, I think of him as still new, President uh, Lake Lambert um, uh, travel with the uh, with the choir and uh, accompany us in this um, exciting event. So among other things, of course, many other things last year, but that re-energized us and um, uh, led to a wonderful conclusion at baccalaureate and commencement. And then uh, we were lucky enough to have not a particularly large group of graduating seniors. Um, but this year, um, the auditions during the August experience brought to us um, a number of exciting freshmen. I, I say exciting because they are ready to go. They're really invested in our mission. They seem to really fit in immediately, start making friends and, and um, communicate with our second, third, and fourth year students. And, and uh, I'm really excited that my singers tell me that they come to choir to be with their family members, so that's kind of exciting. I think that's a great thing about the arts program. Um, I think it's true probably other schools too, but 
when you when you're in a choir or theater or some kind of performing thing you do yes. develop a little family and it's like a family within a family because you know Hanover's not that big. Of course, <laughs> it's very exciting. So we have a, a very very large ensembles that have not been this large in in uh, quite a, quite a bit of time, and I always say that uh, numbers don't do justice, of course, but um, the attitude, the intent and what the fo of, of singers who come to those choirs and what, of course, what they seem to take away is uh, incredibly important for us and we're looking forward to everything that is uh, um, ahead of us. Our run out concerts that we will have probably to uh, three different uh, places in Indianapolis and in Louisville. We make connections with local churches and sometimes folks say, well, but that's just church. It's not really a church only. It's a community of folks that we are connected through our alumni, through our music friends, and also through the people that we meet and greet there and who hopefully the people whom it, we touch uh, with our music. And I, our rehearsals, knock on wood, are going great uh, this year and uh, the students seem to be excited about the new um, performing opportunities and the new material that we have started and specifically about new uh, Bulgarian music that I have brought with me um, after my trip to Bulgaria, to Europe. I should mention that Bulgaria is my original homeland <laughs> and uh, so hopefully Hopefully, we, we, we will have an American premiere of a manually composed piece. Well, I know that your mother watches yes, the does. concerts from Bulgaria. Um, do you have other people in Bulgaria that will be watching this year, because, especially because you're going to be performing some of the music from there? Well, of course. I, um, I had the uh, opportunity to reunite with the members of uh, the choir in my alma mater, my undergraduate alma mater, the Academy for Music and Dance Art in Plovdiv, Bulgaria. We had the reunion concert and I, I had the privilege to be invited to conduct and, and um, then there we did another world premiere of another newly composed piece and um, I reconnected with them. They're all music professionals, conductors, music teachers, um, instrumental music teachers. They're, they're still in a variety of realms connected to the art. And so um, they were asking me about what, what, what is coming up and I was sharing with them that uh, it's uh, incredible to me uh, the fact that here in our a small liberal arts, we have the opportunity to connect with the world and um, I would like very personally and specifically to thank you for everything that you do to make sure that all of our programs are recorded and broadcast and that means a lot to um, all of us and that allows us to connect with uh, not only family like in my case but also colleagues they're very interested in what American choirs are doing how our singers are interpreting for example the more or less native literature music literature like the spirituals like the gospel songs and of course contemporary music vocal jazz and the like and um, even the other day, a colleague of mine, a very dear friend, she's the music director and conductor of uh, Haskovo Youth Choir, and they have their 40th um, anniversary, if you will, of, their, of them being founded. And uh, so we decided uh, with the Hanover College Concert Choir to send them a little greeting. So we recorded a little something for them, and uh, so we spoke in Bulgarian and that is really amazing for folks to hear over there and be excited about that. And so uh, we we're hoping that a lot of folks will be connecting with us, will be interested in what uh, we have to perform and so again I'm very grateful. Well I was going to ask you if you were planning any um, other concerts like the inauguration, if there were any significant things this year coming up. You said you might be going to some churches, but are there any other things specifically that you want to tell us about? Um, let's see. 
Yes, there are a lot of things in the works for us. We are starting on October the 8th with uh, a Tabernacle Presbyterian Church in Indianapolis where one of our trustees, Reverend John Gable, is um, a minister and we're looking forward to reconnecting with him along with uh, um, Matt Kaufman who is the music director there with whom um, I have worked on, on uh, numerous occasions and we'll start with that trip of course President Lambert will also um, be a part of um, that um, service then in February and mid-February and mid-March will return to Second Presbyterian Church in um, Indianapolis, which is one of the uh, churches with the large and significant uh, concert series and music program and be invited to be a part of their uh, season is a wonderful um, statement to all the hard work and uh, the talent that our students have. And of course uh, in Louisville uh, we will be in early, early February, if I'm not mistaken. And there also we, we aim to present um, really a variety of repertoire that will showcase the skill, the level of commitment our students have, the beauty of variety of styles. And we have, for example, a beautiful gospel piece um, called City Called Heaven. And that also showcases a number of our soloists that have vocal improvisation in that piece. Of course, the piano part is uh, very, very uh, exciting and uh, it's emotionally touching and emotionally moving piece that a lot of our audiences relate with us. And of course, we have our traditional season here that we the start with the fall concert that follows with the uh, um, Christmas at Hanover which we will try for second year in a row to have it as a, a sing-along and uh, we would like to invite all of our friends in the community to join us and um, is that, in the that is going to be campus? in the in the uh, Brown Campus Chapel we try to explore new spaces. We have our large chor choral events here in the Center for Fine Arts at the Fitzgibbon Recital Hall. Um, and then we try to connect with the community. And if we could explore uh, the sonorous uh, environment of uh, the chapel, I think it's, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to be in a different environment, to hopefully connect even closer with uh, our friends and what a better occasion than Christmas um, <laughs> for that to happen. And of course we have long-term plans, but I'm gonna be a little coy on that one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you gotta keep back some secrets. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> some surprises. I, I bet it sounds amazing in that chapel because it's kind of, um, it's got that e little echo thing. It just kind of makes the voices seem like they're just Really, yeah. really, really uh, large. It's a, it's a very sonorous space. It's very rewarding to sing in that type of sound environment because we can hear ourselves and uh, each one of the singers can enjoy uh, their performance. We have uh, had difficult circumstances, for example, when, uh, when we are outside the soundscape is not as favorable or when we have to be mic'd and we do not hear the reverb, if you will, from the, from the mic, but the audiences get to enjoy uh, the mix away from us. So for the chapel, it's really rewarding and uh, sometimes we have to even modify it to make ourselves sound a bit smaller because of the, the size of the, of the room. Well, the space is... It's, it's tiny, but it sounds big. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. And it's a, that presents us the different series of challenges, though, which is another educational opportunity. So uh, again, I'm I'm grateful for for what uh, we have here on campus because Fitzgibbon it's such a large room. But again, positioning on stage, um, rehearsal time in the space is of crucial importance for the final product and the sound mixes much better in the hall over the audience as, a, as it does in on stage and for the chapel 
we can have variety of standing arrangements and we can hear each other and uh, it really is exciting. Well, I'll be excited to come over and join in on that. <laughs> we would love to have you. The first thing that that we have here is the fall concert. Um, when you're trying to decide what you're going to perform, what do you what do you consider when you pick pieces for a concert? There are a variety of, of elements that go into trying to pick a concert repertoire. It depends on what basically you, you are trying to say with it. So sometimes our concerts have a chronological approach that showcase pieces from Gregorian chant, like our Ave Maria project, for example, started with Gregorian chant and went with the development of that particular chant throughout the, the centuries. Then, besides the chronological approach, because we have thematic approaches, for example, sacred choral works from a particular century. Then we can mix it up with sacred and secular works from a particular time period. Um, as we are an educational institution, it is crucial, uh, in my opinion, that we offer our students the opportunity not only to experience, read about, listen to, but also perform and learn how to accurately perform uh, pieces from early music, from the Renaissance, motets and madrigals through Baroque compositions and uh, the Baroque is a very rich and ornate style that uh, uh, lends itself beautifully to smaller compositions like motets um, and uh, shorter works as well as larger choral works like Handel's Messiah which is a uh, oratorio we all are familiar with and of course, what we call mini major works, not because they're not uh, strong enough to be called major works, but because of their duration. Um, so anything up to 20 minutes to half an hour, we sometimes call a mini major work. So um, that's another way for our spring uh, concert, which is usually end of March or beginning of April, we I try to select variety of multicultural music. Um, it has been known to happen that the choir could sing on five, six languages um, during one concert. For example, this past um, spring, we had an Icelandic piece and we're fortunate enough to have a native speaker, our colleague, Professor Erickson, um, in the economics department, was gracious enough to come and help us with the um, Icelandic pronunciation. And of course, uh, he was able to share some of the cultural heritage for that particular piece. And it was a very exciting uh, time for our singers to experience. We sang Bulgarian pieces. We sang uh, vocal jazz from Sweden, which is um, exciting and uh, um, I, could, I, I dare say powerful. And of course, uh, as I mentioned, we have our um, spirituals and gospel pieces and of course um, pieces that are really close to home like back home again in Indiana so um, having the combination of larger works smaller compositions sacred secular variety of uh, historical and cultural era along with multicultural compositions for smaller ensembles, for larger ensembles. We have solos, we have duets, we have trios sometimes. So um, the sky is really the limit, as I say to, to everybody who um, wants to join our program, our choral ensembles, our um, voice lessons so that they have opportunity to be selected to be a soloist for a major work like Handel's Oratorio. They have opportunity to be a major and minor or just a um, general student and still um, have the option to present a solo recital, to audition, or to travel with the choir, to experience the beauty of music making with others. And so it's uh, really a very, very in my opinion, fulfilling 
experience. It is emotionally, intellectually, um, and spiritually satisfying, as well as for some folks that we hope will be professionally satisfying. Do you have students that uh, come into the program that have not been exposed to the type of music and then suddenly it's like they become really interested in like some of this more classical? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I live with, with a, a bunch of guys that are very musically interested in things. Uh, maybe not so much the, the classic, well one of my sons is interested in classical more than the others, but um, most uh, teenagers tend to stick with their what they mm -hmm. popular right. music. So yes. this might be an opportunity mm -hmm. to really broaden their world a little bit. And it sounds like you spend a lot of time. They learn not just the music, but some history and oh, exactly history and language and culture and experience, um, the music, and they see most importantly the reaction of the audiences and how we are able to touch folks and that it really is important and uh, um, uh, there there are very few things that I consider more liberating than allowing yourself to let go and just experience the stage be yourself allow your voice your emotion to really carry your message or the message of the composer but through your voice it's an intensely personal experience and um, in my opinion folks really connect with uh, um, vocal music on a on a different level yes I do have a lot of uh, throughout the years I have had folks who have had very limited experiences um, either in music as a whole or specifically in singing um, this type of repertoire which is well actually this type I just said that there is a little wide variety in it and it's very interesting and and um, fulfilling but uh, we have had even folks who really had a burning desire to participate and had difficulty matching pitch and we have worked with them separately until they are comfortable and confident to the point that they can lend their voice to the uh, just the beauty the bouquet of, level of voices if you will that uh, we have in the choirs so do you have a theme this year I don't think that we have a specific title for the concert, but uh, again, um, in the fall concert, we try to connect, to invite our friends from the community to join us. So this year again, we will have the Jefferson County Civic Chorale, which is a, a folks from the community who sing at churches, who are uh, lifelong musicians or who are interested in being a part of it to join us. And um, we're presenting a mini uh, major work and that is a Magnificat. And what is interesting about this composition um, is the fact that it is attributed to Giovanni Pergolesi. However, in actuality, it was written by his teacher, Francesco Durante, and uh, that is a source of confusion in the um, music history circles, but it's very interesting that they're stylistically very close to each other. So again, we get to experience the uh, performance practice of the Baroque era. It's, uh, uh, it has opportunities for solos, for um, female voices and for the male voices we have a combination a great unity of uh, fast and slow movement uh, movements and of course my soul doth magnifies the Lord is the main message of a Magnificat and uh, along with the Magnificat we'll have s spirituals and gospel pieces we'll have at least two Eastern Orthodox um, pieces and of course um, a lot of other materials like solo um, work that it's arias from oratorios that will be interspersed. So the sacred theme continu continues with us and um, we'll have Latin, 
Church Slavonic, English, Bulgarian, at least in this this concert. Do you have a personal favorite song that that the, one of the groups is performing? Um, <laughs> interesting that you should ask me that because I was sharing with the chamber singers the other day that uh, I shy away from playing favorites oh. <laughs> uh, because that that um, not focusing on one favorite piece of music kind of allows me to stay open and to find the beauty in uh, little things in in every single piece of music some as you know some of the uh, strong pieces of music they grab you instantaneously from the first note and you cannot help but be immersed in it immediately and others kind of grow on you um, it's a little bit of a process and I think it's important for us to learn to enjoy both to be immediately taken to allow ourselves to be in it and uh, the other one to work a little bit to get to know um, the musical composition and from there to enjoy it uh, even more. So yes, I do have favorites. Of course, my, the Bulgarian pieces are my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, but my, um, the piece that pulls on my heartstrings is that uh, city called heaven, which we're very much looking forward to sharing with everybody. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about the concert or the Program. I always uh, share this with, with, with the members of the Hanover College Concert Choir and um, chamber singers that uh, I really appreciate very much everything that they do, the hard work that they put into, the heart and the soul that they put into, and that I'm completely and utterly aware of the sacrifices that they make. Um, of uh, their time. I hope that they're not sacrifices that lead to a loss. I hope that they're sacrifices that lead to enrichment and the sacrifices that uh, um, uh, make them feel fulfilled and uh, purposeful and excited about not only learning something new but connecting with, with other members of the choir with me as the their director and of course with our audiences so um, and I'm grateful that I have music in my life of course. I think um, people that don't participate in a performance type of activity um, don't really appreciate the amount of hard work because if you're doing it right it looks really easy. Yes. I mean that goes for singing or playing an instrument or acting um, it just looks like it's just so natural, but behind the scenes, people are doing a lot of grueling hard work that that is fulfilling, but at the same time, it's still hard work. Well, exactly, it's uh, it's really unfortunate that um, the learning processes in different disciplines seems to be more familiar to our uh, community at large, and. Um, in music, that is not the case. As you as you pointed out, some folks believe that we simply get up and sing, and it's uh, as simple as that. And it really is yeah. exceptionally difficult. And uh, kind of pulling sound from thin air, it's really a question of a lot of hard work to learn the pitch, to learn the rhythm, to learn the text, to learn to listen, to learn to how to breathe even and uh, how to execute a sound that is aesthetically pleasing, that is uh, culturally accurate, that is time period accurate. And it's, it's really a lot of hard work, not to mention singing in languages that you have never read, let alone speak nor understand, and doing it with the correct inflection of the voice, the correct stress syllables, the phrasing. And it really is a lot of hard work, and I'm hoping that <coughs> excuse me, that uh, people will uh, join us. The fall concert will be Sunday, October 29th at 2 o'clock in Fitzgibbons Recital Hall in the Lynn Center for Fine Arts here at Hanover College. So, so we can share um, all of that uh, hard work and the beauty of music with everybody. And um, 
I would like to thank you very much for having me here today oh, and well, the opportunity <laughs> and the opportunity to to share a little bit about us and hopefully we will do it again I I, I as I said I, I kept something little um, for our next conversation and then we'll be happy to to share it okay well thank you so much for being here today and don't forget to put it on your calendar October 29th at 2 p.m. be in the Lynn Center for Fine Arts and if you can't come you can log on to our um, live stream and watch it from home on your computer or your phone and enjoy the concert from there and we want to welcome all our international um, audience too from Bulgaria yes her mother yes <laughs> and everywhere in uh, in Europe at least yes thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time